In 9 ABY, the New Republic was in the midst of facing their first great threat, the re-emergence of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Thrawn had reunited and was now leading Imperial forces with exceptional competency, unifying several major warlords and quickly recapturing territory. The first few months of the conflict saw several major New Republic losses, with only a few wins. However, notably famed rebellion figure Garm Bel Iblis had returned to action and was now stationed on Coruscant. Facilitating Thrawn's rampage across the galaxy was the clone of Dark Jedi Joris Savioth, who was using his force powers to coordinate Imperial forces. However, the relationship between Thrawn and Sabaoth was very difficult at best, with the crazed Dark Jedi more interested in capturing and converting the Solo children rather than reinstating Imperial rule. This came to a head after a failed kidnapping of the newborn twins on Coruscant, and the two men agreed that the most pressing immediate goal was the removal of the New Republic. Sabaoth ordered an attack on Coruscant, and Thrawn agreed. First, as he often did, Myth Ra Nerodo fainted with a fake attack at the planet Mirist. This drew away the core sector fleet which typically protected Coruscant. The New Republic most likely believed that their capital planet, even without the protective fleet, was untouchable. This would be tested. Thrawn entered the system with eight interdictor cruisers, with two more, plus eight Katana Dreadnoughts soon following. Immediately, the New Republic sends a recall notice to the Sector Fleet. However, Imperial forces destroy the sensor relay stations around Coruscant, making any sort of response or follow-up to the SOS impossible. Defensively, Coruscant was protected by two Golan III platforms, as well as ground-based cannons. Unfortunately, at this point, the Imperial Fleet and the Golan cannons themselves were outside the range of the ground-based ion cannons. Six Star Destroyers would soon appear, splitting up into two groups of three and heading towards the Golan platforms. At this point, the New Republic was launching their starfighters and gunships, and the smaller Imperial dreadnoughts and support vessels were moving to escort the Star Destroyers. As the Star Destroyers entered the Golan kill zones and began firing on the massive stations, interdictor cruisers move up to perform what was known as a Thrawn pincer. They activate their gravity well generators, allowing two victory Star Destroyers to make ultra-precise jumps next to the weapons platforms where they're able to deliver a full broadside, almost piercing the shields. As this is happening, New Republic vessels are attempting to push back the Empire with no effect. Up to this point, the New Republic's response had been led by Admiral Drayson, a respected commander but not near the tactical genius of Thrawn. Eventually, the role shifts to Garm Bel Iblis, who immediately changes strategy. New Republic forces pull back near the planet, where they can be covered by the Ion Cannon. Bel Iblis knew that they were just wasting ships. Realistically, the Golan Threes could likely withstand an assault for some time, and likely long enough for the Sector Fleet to return. Thrawn recognizes the change in strategy, and realizes that Garm Bel Iblis probably just took command. That's fine, he decides to implement his ultimate plan. The Star Destroyers open their hangars and launch 22 cloaked asteroids. These asteroids, which are moved into position with the Star Destroyers tractor beams, begin crashing into ships and enter orbit around the planet. Alongside the real asteroids, Thrawn also fakes the launch of 265 more. However, there's no way for the New Republic to tell which which ones are cloaked and which ones just don't exist, because cloaking technology also removes things from sensor readings. So Thrawn effectively blockades Coruscant while using almost no resources. The New Republic is forced to keep the planetary shield up or risk a catastrophic asteroid crash. With the shield up, no one can leave or enter the planet, and there's no real way to quickly destroy the asteroids. This however was just one more step in Thrawn's ultimate plan. He knew the New Republic would now need to find the crystal grav field trap, which would be able to identify the cloaked asteroids. This all culminated with the Battle of Bilbringi, where he came very close to landing a death blow against the New Republic. I've actually broke down that battle in some detail, and I'll link to it in the upper right hand corner. But what do you think? Was Thrawn's strategy incredibly intelligent, or was there some way to counter it that the New Republic just didn't think of? Personally, I wonder whether some sort of gravity generating device, like an interdictor cruiser would have been able to pull the asteroids out of orbit, but that's just my opinion. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in, this has been your host Eckhart Slatter, until next time, may the force be with you.